So hello and welcome to E9 monthly webinars. Today with us we have Dr. Anna Avalkina from Bryo University in Berlin, Germany, who will talk to us about the rising threat of paper mills, which is a new some new forms of misconduct and fraud. So very welcome, uh, Dr. Avalkina. And uh, without further ado, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, NIO for invitation. And today I'm going to speak about, about paper mills, about what we know about paper mills, about what we don't know about paper mills and what is the threat of a paper mill. So now I would like to share my, um, my slides. Uh, so I, I, I will speak and I will give the presentation and then there will be floor for, for questions. So what is the, uh, what we know about paper mills? Um, what kind of misconduct it is? Um, first of all, it is a, on authorship fraud. What we know about authorship fraud, there could be a gift authorship or omitted authorship. But in the case of a paper mill, uh, money um, involved in the case of uh, authorship fraud. So uh, there are broker companies that are paper mills that sell authorship slots in papers that have been written by other scholars or ghostwriters. Uh, or some scholars offer a place in their paper. So this is the the core of the uh, of the misconduct. But what also we know about uh, paper mills that normally they are accompanied by other types of academic misconduct by plagiarism. Uh, or fabrication of uh, data images or falsification of data and images. So here I present some examples of offers or companies, paper mills that you can find online. Some of them are just Google translated in, in English. Uh, so these companies, they are um, they have had quarters in different countries of the world, and all of them um, offer some or offer um, co authorship slots for sale, search for co authors for publication, and so on. So, that could be just paper mills that work online, or another case, um, some paper mills they offer their services via social media and this is just a copy of the of an offer by uh, one uh, indian paper mill so you you can see that it's just dozens of papers uh, offered for proceedings in of one pa -pa -pa publisher and um, now the publisher investigates uh, this case. And you can see that there are just six positions in uh, co-authorship lists and some, some of the uh, slots uh, have been sold already. And when we speak about the, the um, volume of the problem, so how many papers from paper mills um, can be found today? So what is the really the problem and when we we speak about the about it we have to take in consideration that there is always numerator and denominator to understand the share of paper mills for example in the literature so what we know about numerator and what we know about the denominator so actually uh we uh don't know how many papers from paper mills are in the literature. There are thousands of documented cases by different slurs or research integrity experts, uh, maybe also by publishers, but 
much less papers have been retracted. So it means that the a lot of papers are not detected. So just a part of that are documented, is documented. And only a part of what is documented uh, was in reality retracted. Because uh, publishers sometimes are not able to find misconduct uh, or publishers can retract papers due to other reasons, not because of the paper mill, because it's very difficult to confirm the evidence of uh, paper mill origin. And that is why many papers, they are retracted because of violation of peer review, because of fabrication and so on. And, uh, uh, and sometimes it's very difficult to detect because, uh, because we don't know the inner work of the paper mill and we can see only like manipulation of peer review or plagiarism of fabrications or template similarities between papers. So here we can see um, the figure that represents the number of retracted papers by year of publication or by the year of uh, retraction. And uh, you can see that there is a rise of uh, paper mill pa papers published since 2017, uh, but retractions uh, start massive retraction, start only in 2020. Look, for example, here, so this is uh, just print screens of news about publishers retracting 500 papers uh, originating from paper mills or 122. And we can see that publishers are absolutely different. And this is a, uh, so, since 2020, there are massive retractions of paper mill papers from academic literature. Uh, but I have to, to mention that we also don't know how many, in reality, how many papers from paper mills, because uh, there is a difficulty of detection. So journal, what journal can see, um, for example, a peer review fraud, I will talk about uh, peer review fraud a bit later, how paper mills do this, uh, or journals, they can see common submission practices, for example, the identical email or identical letters, um, cover letters, for example, or journals, they can see a request of the authorship changes after acceptance of the manuscript. But when papers, so actually journals, they don't have, if editors are not aware of, uh, of paper mills and how paper mills work, they are not able to detect some suspicious patterns or suspicious red flags. So, and when papers are published, so then the academic community can see other suspicious uh, patterns of the of the uh, of the papers from paper mills, for example, common structures and templates of papers in different journals, or plagiarism, or fabrication and falsification of data, or for example, incorrect nucleated sequence region. There was um, a study about that. So how paper mills they fabricate the data in this uh, use nucleated sequence region, uh, or they manipulate citations, or uh, since recently there are slurs or um, research integrity experts, including me, who detect uh, offers um, published by paper mills, or for example, also paper mills can be detected by weird emails. These are just an example. Uh, because each paper mill has its own business model and its own patterns and so to say red, red flags. So this is an example and a particular paper mill can have um, other, other suspicious patterns. Um, so, and, and 
so when we speak about nominated denominator, so uh, with what we have to compare the number of uh, detected or not detected um, papers from paper mills. So should we compare with all published papers or we should compare with the papers that actually journals are able to detect as suspicious? Uh, COPE, to, together with ASTM, they made a study of paper mills last year. And so they uh, look and they, they surveyed some publishers about the possibility of publishers uh, to detect fraudulent and suspicious papers. So um, actually here on, on this figure, you can see that six publishers that they were able to detect, to identify 139 uh, papers are just suspicious papers and they didn't publish them. But at the same time, they published 457 papers that later were found to be originating from, um, from paper mills. So the possibility uh, or ability of uh, journals and publishers uh, to detect uh, paper mills is not high. And um, the uh, percentage of the share of suspicious papers submitted to journals of six publishers ranged from two to 46%. So some journals are actually flooded with submissions from, uh, from paper mills. Um, so when this actually problem appeared, if we look at the Retraction Watch database, we can see that the first papers from paper mills uh, date back to 2004, 2007, but increased number of Fake papers can be traced since 2017. And these papers are mainly originated or associated with China. Then, since 2019, there is increase in number of uh, paper mill papers from other countries. Why this period? Uh, because it's just my hypothesis, um, or maybe also evidence uh, as per what we, we can see how uh, scholars publish their papers. Uh, we can see that before 2019, may, many broker companies relied on predatory journals. And so scholars mainly from developing countries or those countries which integrate um, into international scientific community, uh, they relied on, on, on publications and predatory journals that were indexed in Scopus or Web of Science or other international centimetric databases. And in this very time, in 2019 and 2020, Scopus and Web of Science started to exclude massively such journals, such predatory journals. And that is why the, uh, the strategy to rely on on predatory journals was not effective because anytime the journal can be excluded that it means that the broker company can have a lot of losses, just money losses. And that's why they started to uh, orient to reputable journals, but with fraudulent content. So it's, it's possible to see uh, this evidence how the broker companies um, at least in some countries, for example, in post-Soviet countries, they transformed their activity. So they transformed their activity uh, and reoriented to from predatory journals to reputable journals, but offering co-authorship for, for sale. Um, as for the disciplines, uh, so here also I used Retraction Watch database to see uh, where, uh, in what, in which, what kind of disciplines the papers uh, were retracted. And the biology and macrobiology, these disciplines dominate. So among others, computer sciences or medicine, and just a bit of humanities and physics and engineering. But we should interpret this figure with caution. 
because there are thousands of papers documented that they originate from paper mills, but they are not retracted. And also we, we should inter interpret with caution the, uh, the dominant affiliation of um, Chinese scholars. Because if you look at retraction watch database, the 90% of scholars with retracted papers are affiliated with Chinese institutions. We know that in China, there are a lot of paper mills, mainly because uh, of a pressure of publication and uh, reward system when the first author gets all financial rewards. And also we know that in some uh, hospitals, medical hospitals in China, their promotion is connected with uh, publications in uh, international journals. So this kind of publication pressure uh, had an impact on uh, fraudulent behavior, suspicious behavior of, of Chinese scholars. But also we know that there are uh, paper mills um, in, working in absolutely different countries, in Eastern Europe, in the post-Soviet uh, countries, in Iran, in Middle East, and in Southeast Asia. But unfortunately, um, the situation of nowadays is so that these documented cases <clears throat> are not still retracted. So now I would like to speak about the author's perspective. So why authors uh, require such fraudulent services by paper mills? One of the uh, most important explanation is publish and uh, perish in many uh, developing countries. So many, many um, countries, for example, like post-Soviet countries, they um, borrow this standardization of uh, evaluation of uh, scientific output, like publications in international journals, Syntax and Scopus and the Web of Science. And that is why they are pressed to publish because of the contracts, they are pressed to publish in international journals. Also in many countries, the promotion is linked to, uh, to publications as, as in the case in China, or also in the case of other countries, also the Soviet countries. In some countries, there is a requirement to publish papers in international journals before the defense of PhD thesis. Many uh, rich countries, for example, with oil extraction countries like in the Middle East, uh, they offer a financial bonus for publications. And this is kind of a, a motivation to publish more. Also, it could be a contract requirement, or as we can see in many papers that uh, are originating from paper mills, they have acknowledgement of grant funding. It means that actually um, scholars use grant money and they uh, publish just, they pay to paper mills and they, they, they pay to paper mills and they publish um, dishonest papers using budget grant money. Um, and now I would like to speak about several cases of um, paper mills of what actually my work was to, to detect some, uh, some fraudulent papers. And I would like to speak about two cases. The first one is the paper mill or broker company that I call Tanu Pro. This weird uh, title is linked to the email domain that this paper, paper mill used to submit papers to reputable journals. So this is the Google translation of the uh, page of this paper mill. I, could, I, I was able to detect even the company that offers these services and uh, they offer rewriting of papers and they guarantee publication. And the peculiar feature of this 
paper mill is that they submit papers with weird domains. Uh, and uh, they published more than 1,000 papers uh, since 2019. So they actually, in 2019, they started this activity. Um, so I uh, collect all these papers in the um, uh, spreadsheet. So this is the pre-screen. And um, there are some examples of weird email domains that this uh, paper mill uses to submit papers. For example, this is the last example. They use different clusters. There are more than 40 um, email domains that were detected. And you can see um, some even weird country domains. So there are scholars from Kazakhstan and they use the domain from Belgium or from Netherlands or from Germany. So the countries even don't, don't correspond. Um, sometimes this, um, uh, these um, domains, they look like university, for example, Polytechnica or something like that. So, uh, and this, knowing this pattern of weird email domains, it gave possibility to detect actually all papers that were submitted with, uh, with these domains. Or another example that uh, uh, one scholar used this paper mill several times. And each time uh, this scholar had a different email. Um, you can see with even different, um, some weird numbers and uh, weird countries that didn't correspond to, to his affiliation. And so he, he did it for, for three years. For sure it's a red flag for, uh, for publishers to, to investigate, but unfortunately, these weird email domains and emails, they, they are not enough to retract the paper and to consider papers fraudulent. And what was the next was to understand if in reality, all these papers fraudulent or not. And together with the professor in psychology of uh, Oxford, Dorothy Bishop, we uh, scrutinized six papers in the Journal of Community Psychology. Why these papers? Because this journal uh, supports open peer review and all peer reviews can be openly accessed in Publons. Now it's uh, part of Clarivate. And we found just looking, uh, Dorothy Bishop, she looked at the content of the papers because I don't understand anything in the psychology and if, they, if the papers are good or not. Uh, and we found uh, serious problems. So uh, Dorothy Bishop uh, found that these papers are uh, low quality papers. And then we found the, the, the uh, some other uh, serious flows uh, in these papers, like citations to predatory journals, citations to suspicious journals where fake identities of re peer reviewers were included in the editor board. I'll show you the example later. Also, we found uh, the violation of peer review uh, because there were so, so superficial comments like, please change keywords or improve conclusions or correct typos. So there were not serious peer reviews. And what is more interesting that these uh, peer reviews were submitted on the same day, quite in all the papers. And this is, uh, then later we found that this is uh, statistically impossible because we checked other peer reviews because maybe this journal requires immediate peer, peer review. But uh, in all other papers which we randomly selected, we didn't find uh, uh, this kind of uh, difference of one day or, the, or submission on the same day. And we also found that the uh, identities of peer reviewers were fake. Um, so this is just a print screen of the Puglons um, page. Now it's a part of Clarivate, but I did print screen when it was Puglons. So you can see that uh, two 
reviewer reports for one paper were submitted on the same day. And that was the case for quite all other papers. Or this is an example of um, peer review. So uh, you can see just most of the references are too old. Please refresh the literature. So just um, not deep, <laughs> real peer review. And also we have the name of, um, of reviewer, Eric Letmeyer. We could click on this name and to see the profile. Uh, and the profile is empty. So there are no publications in Web of Science. There are no citations, but there are three verified peer reviews for this, uh, for this person. And then we also find found that this person is um, editor in one scientific journal. And then it was found that quite all people, I mean, it is a real journal, but quite all people in this, uh, in this journal are fake. So we can't find any um, publications or affiliation or just in this University of West Bohemia, there is no scholar like Eric Letmeyer. And now it was possible to detect more than 50 identities like, 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 like this. Um, or um, there is another case of um, paper mills. So um, I, I wanted to, to add that uh, we, together with um, uh, Dorothy uh, Bishop, we, we wrote a preprint about this case. We submitted to the Journal of Community Psychology to see how it's possible that such a reputable journal, and it is a reputable journal of psychology, could publish such papers of low quality with uh, weird emails with um, fake peer review. And we, we uh, thought that maybe an editor doesn't read actually the papers, and we submitted our preprint about the paper mill and about these six papers that we detected uh, to be fraudulent. Uh, and uh, our paper was rejected uh, uh, with um, uh, with a final decision totally, no, fatally flawed. Um, and after that, Wally started an, an investigation and about 10 days ago, these papers, all six papers have been retracted. But, um, and it gives us the possibility, this investigation of these six papers gives us the possibility to think and hypothesize that other papers from Tanupro are also uh, fraudulent. Um, and this is another case of, um, of a paper mill. Uh, this is a paper mill that is called International Publisher. It is registered and it has uh, a headquarter in Moscow. It's situated in a business uh, skyscraper in the center of Moscow. And it operates since 2018 and offers co-authorship slots for sale. Um, and the price of co-authorship slots varies from 180 to 500 thousand euros um, and the price depends on the journal its impact factor and also depends on the position of the author so to be the to have the first position costs more and i analyzed uh, 2000 offers from this paper mill published online so this is just an example of of an offer of a paper mill it's google translated and this offer gives enough information to, to detect the real paper. So we can see the title, so the topic of the paper, and one paper with quite identical topic uh, was published. We have the uh, year of publication and it uh, matches. So we have just five authorship slots for sale and in the end, the paper has five co-authors and also um, 
the beginning, this paper mill published the country of the journal, so and it also matches. And so it gives enough, enough information and confirmation of a paper mill origin. So now uh, I also collect all findings in a spreadsheet. So this is the um, print screen of this spreadsheet. I have detected up, up to date 460 papers. Uh, they were published in 152 journals, authentic journals and three hijacked journals. Uh, hijacked journals represent just criminal websites or scam websites that mimic original journals. They have the same title, the same ISSN, and they collect money for publication without peer review. So it's kind of a journal scam. Uh, so this paper mill, it sold during two and a half years, or during three years, more than six thousand co-authorship slots and in all the papers that I have detected that originate from paper mills these papers are written by uh, 800 more than 800 scholars from at least 39 countries and they represent more than 300 universities around the world so the majority at the beginning of this um, uh, paper mill was oriented to to Russia and to Russian scholars, but later it's reoriented to post-Soviet space and uh, also to China. And nowadays they have a website that in, in three languages, in Russian, English, and, and also Chinese. And uh, even if it is situated in Russia, there is evidence that after the war, after the 24th of uh, February, this paper mill works. It uh, works and it's possible to, to see, it was possible to see that they sold a lot of co-authorship slots to scholars from other countries in the world. So they reorient now to outside Russia for this fraudulent and offer these fraudulent services. All this is another <clears throat> example. So we can detect some fabrication of data in uh, in the papers that were published and that originate from this uh, paper mill. Uh, this is an offer. I left it in Russian, but it's possible to see like, just the number is 300 children aged from four to five years. And also uh, the authors had to uh, insert the city of the uh, of the city where actually the study took place and then at the end it was uh, Wuhan in China. And so the abstracts uh, match. And also it's possible to see that the first co-author is from China and in the, uh, the paper at the end there is also a uh, scholar affiliated with, uh, with China. And this is an example of, of fabrication. Or there is another example of fabrication. So on your left, this is an abstract uh, from a real paper. Uh, there are numbers in the abstract and they absolutely identical to the numbers that I found in one uh, Russian paper in the Russian language. So the, the problem is that the paper on your left that was published by a scholar so, um, affiliated with one famous American university. And uh, it's, uh, it studies ashes in Detroit. And the data were taken from a paper uh, uh, that studied ashes, just leaves, leaves fall in Orenburg in, in Russia. So how it was possible that uh, paper mills, for example, the paper mill international publisher, they succeeded to publish so many papers because they used the strategy of uh, individual submissions, submissions to individual journals. For example, they submitted just one paper, they published one paper in 98 uh, journals 
It means that these channels were not able to detect some similarities between submissions. As many, there are many recommendations to journals nowadays to see the similarities between tip plates, submission process, and so on. So this paper used absolutely different strategy. One just strategy, one paper, one journal. Um, also, what uh, they they did, they used um, the strategy of um, suspicious collaborations with editors of the journal. And this pattern was, it was possible to detect in uh, four MDPI journals, where uh, the um, scholars, some this um, identities, these entities, one, two, three, they were affiliated with one um, university in, um, in Eastern Europe, part of European Union, and they were editors or academic editors of papers, or they were co-authors of papers originating from paper mill. One could think that it's a coincidence, but unfortunately not, because many authors, they clearly stated that one place is reserved for an editor from this particular country. Or the paper mill also used um, um, special issues, as many people, many paper mills uh, um, use. It's a very common practice. They just publish special issues with a lot of papers from paper mills. And so one author just says that there is a special issue with 10 papers, and it was possible to detect nine papers from, from 10. As for as from the publishers, you can see here that, well, quite all publishers are involved, I mean, reputable, but also um, just not so well-known publishers, um, some also predatory journals, because this paper mill started with predatory journals in 2018, but then they uh, changed their strategy and they just publish their papers now in um, mostly reputable, reputable publishers. Uh, also, what is, was possible to detect that uh, these papers, they do have suspicious collaborations in authorship list. I give you an example of a paper on uh, just paper about polymer film coating. It's something about uh, chemical engineering. This authored by two uh, courses, one affiliated with medical university and second one with uh, financial university. And it's um, inconsistency between the, uh, the research interests and affiliations of the courses. Um, so in this collaboration uh, patterns, it's possible that actually causes that they are not familiar with, it, with each other, so they don't know each other. They don't have common research interests, like in this very case, they are affiliated with, so there is a diversity of affiliations per paper, and uh, it's quite impossible. And it, for example, in many papers from Iranian paper mills, it's possible to uh, to see them with bare eyes because there are eight courses and all represent uh, absolutely different countries. And it's, well, rather suspicious. It's not misconduct, but it's very suspicious. And it's um, like a, a red flag to pay attention to such a paper. So also uh, these uh, authors, they specialize in different disciplines also like in this case, and they might not specialize in the topic of the paper. Also, this paper mill has typical number of uh, courses, like from, from three to five, and so how many courtship slots they actually sold. And there is a total alphabetical disorder in the courtship list, because um, in many disciplines, there is alphabetical order of how you place authors, um, like in economics or in mathematics, and um, 
here in this sample just the majority not just majority more than 85 percent of papers they did have alphabetical disorder um, this paper mill was investigated bo both by some american scholars and also uh by by me uh, so retraction watch published an investigation about this paper mill and i published a preprint and the paper mill, well, what can be the reaction of a paper mill? They can close the operations, a close website, but they uh, started to defend themselves. So this paper mill published an archive on their website. So here you can see archive, it's in Russian, but it's archive from 2018, 19, 20, 21. They published about 100,000 papers, mainly are written by Russian scholars. So these papers are legitimate papers by legitimate scholars. And um, unfortunately, uh, some uh, international scholars started to identify these papers and publish comments on Papier about these papers. Uh, luckily, it was possible to stop this activity, but anyway, uh, it means that paper mills, they don't stop the activity, they adapt, they defend, they even attack, um, and this is a real threat for academic community. Uh, and so, in my conclusions, I would like to say that actually the current system of paper mill detection should be regularly monitored and approved because each paper mill has its own peculiar features and patterns and publishers are not aware of them and so they they have to take into consideration that paper mills they adapt or some new paper mills appear uh, a lot of paper mills are still not discovered we don't know anything about paper mills in latin america or in africa because nobody actually discovers it because many paper mills they are discovered by um, independent sleuths, research integrity uh, experts and this is absolutely pro bono work so they are not paid even they receive threats uh, lawsuits and so on um, also what is important to say that transparency is not working because the activity of paper mills uh, was described and analyzed by many uh, journals like Science Nature, by Retraction Watch, so there are numerous academic papers and blog uh, posts, but paper mills, they do change the strategy, but paper mills, they don't disappear. Also, what is the challenge is journals' reaction, because, um, mm, well, in my personal experience, also in experience of some other slurs and research integrity experts, well, journals, they don't respond, they don't investigate, or they don't find um, just obvious academic misconduct. So uh, some of them, well, they do respond and do investigate, but the percentage of what was retracted from what was discovered is uh, is a big difference. Uh, and today, there are many instruments to fight paper mills. They refer to symptoms, like how to detect. We look at weird emails. We look at templates. We look at we detect offers. So we this work is intended to clean academic literature. But all these instruments, they refer to symptoms, but not the cause. And the main cause is publication pressure for scholars in many countries that force them to, uh, to buy these um, uh, authorship slots and papers. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, I will be happy to reply. What an amazing talk. Thank you so much, uh, Anna, for this really insightful and, and what the work you are doing. 
Uh, I'm really grateful that you put so much effort into this because this is so important. This is so disruptive to, to science. Uh, and one more science that actually we must change the system somehow because that, as you say, that is the major problem. Uh, all this culture of publish or perish. We have uh, some discussion here in the chat uh, from a co-editor uh, who says that he's getting at least one submission a day from the Tano.pro paper mill, same domain, same reviewers as in your case today. And uh, they would like to send a strong message in hopes of reducing that number. However, we don't know what the best approach is, they say, and we're also afraid of legal ramifications. For instance, when we send a reject withdrawal to this suspicious email, will the authors get that message? Should we consider finding authors' institutional email addresses? I assumed it would be a bad idea to contact scientific publications directly as much as we'd like to tell them to stop. So do you have any suggestion here? Well, um, in my experience, with this six uh, papers from uh, from Journal, Journal of Community Psychology, while they, in their retraction notice, mentioned they they contact authors using their corris just corresponding authors using these weird emails. So, what is the probability that the author actually reads it? No, I I even think that the paper mill itself doesn't read them because. If you think there are at least 1,100 papers with five, for example, with five co-authors, and all of them, they do have an email. So they have 5,000 emails in their database. For sure, even one company doesn't have any possibility to check, uh, to check these uh, to check these emails. I mean, so my answer to your question, if you uh, contact this company directly or you contact uh, using these emails, uh, it doesn't mean that that it it will be it will be stopped because nobody reads it. So how to do it? This is the I think this is a question for discussion. What can be done in this um, in this matter? I don't have an answer how it can be stopped. So I think it can be only stopped with uh, more attractions from this paper mill. This is the only thing that I can I can say. But I, um, I, I would like also to thank Adita for this information about, about, this, uh, about this paper mills and about, about the comment. And uh, if you know some other emails, because you can see these submissions, if you know this, emails please let me know because i can also put it into database that can be used by its open database it can be accessed openly and um so it's uh, helpful for editors to see that these emails are weird and that they don't shouldn't uh, actually look at the papers from the, with this paper mill uh, so what do you think might be good good ideas how to work on, on raising an awareness awareness of this of this problem uh, education for editors education for for early career researchers perhaps as well to to spot these red flags what more can we do so uh first of all uh what we can do also just in my experience you looking at this number of papers, uh, fraudulent papers, I found very helpful to have open peer review. This is very helpful because then you can see what was really peer reviewed or what was not peer reviewed. Um, the one data analyst from Sage Publications, he analyzed uh, the texts of peer reviews of all journals in Sage publications. And he found clusters of identical peer reviews. And uh, the main hypothesis is that these texts are associated with paper mills because so many peer reviews, just dozens of peer reviews with identical text, 
by the way, in the case of Journal of Community Psychology, all of them, the texts were similar. I mean, also with some identical phrases. So pay, open peer review is very helpful. Um, also, um, uh, many journals, they offer to suggest some peer reviewers. And in this, this is the case to use by paper mills because uh, for example, Tanopro, as per what I know, they send a paper and they um, offer three, four uh, editors who can um, review the paper. And some journals, they, they continue to do this, uh, this practice. And this is the, the way how paper mills penetrate into journals. So maybe it's... <laughs> It's more work for editors, for sure, to search for peer reviews, but this is some a gate uh, for, for paper mills. Um, and then also what can be done that, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, just more retractions are helpful. In this case, uh, paper mills won't publish or won't submit these papers anymore, or they uh, change their strategy. And for sure about the education of, of editors, yes, it's very important because many editors, uh, well, they and they shouldn't know, actually, they should know their science, mm. <laughs> their, their discipline. They shouldn't be aware of, uh, uh, of misconduct. Maybe they are not aware that it exists somewhere. Um, and, and yes, the education could be helpful for editors to, to be able to spot these such, such problems. But also, if, um, but it's, it's mostly the problem of the journals, not of big publishers, because big, big publishers, they have some software that, uh, that checks all uh, submitted manuscripts for plagiarism for some other red flags of the papers. But uh, many university journals, reputable journals of very high quality, uh, they are of majority threat for paper mills. Uh, I was about to ask about AI, but uh, Rita put the answer, did the question in the chat before. So how do you see AI tools being used by paper mill companies? And what's your views on the additional challenges it poses to journal editors? How to tackle this? Because now, uh, if we had these peer review mills mm -hmm. uh, basically now AI is going to make it even worse because it will be harder to spot the similarity between these peer reviews for instance. So uh, there are cases where when uh, paper mills used AI generated papers like by Saigon or by Methgen and there are hundreds of papers like that. And uh, there is a study by uh, Guillaume Cabanac and Cyril Labbe. They are computer scientists. And they uh, wrote a script how to detect such uh, papers written by, by Saigon. And um, Guillaume Cabanac, he works now at um, automatic screener of problematic papers. Uh, so there are red flags, like, uh, for example, uh, like uh, Saigon uh, generated papers or there are tortured phrases because many paper mills, what they do, they took, take the text, uh, maybe just somebody's text, and in order to change, to rewrite it, they use automatic uh, synonyms. And it, the, the result, there are absolutely weird phrases in the text. And so uh, Guillaume Cabanac with uh, Cyril Labbe and Alexander Magazinov, they wrote a script to detect these uh, tortured phrases and the academic community contributes to find these weird phrases. So there are hundreds of such phrases and uh, thousands of papers detected. As for your question, uh, then chat GPT is a big threat. And there are two consequences for this. First of all, it will load, lower the prices of uh, paper mills and of these authorship slots because um, uh, paper mills, they 
Many paper mills, they use ghostwriters, I mean, real scholars who, who do this job for money. Or the second uh, result or second consequence could be that the scholars themselves, they would use chat GPT without just applying to, to a paper mill. But this is a, this is a big challenge for sure. So there are nowadays there are no tools for detect. So open uh, this uh, this uh, software. It offers some script to check the text, but it says that the probability of uh, of the uh, of the result is not high. I mean, it's not uh, correct. Could be not correct result. So this is a big challenge for all scientific industry. For all scientific industry. Yes, for, for both research and in education uh, with students and researchers. Maybe the only good thing might be that it can lower the prices for, for so some people. It will kill some of these industries, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, like a good thing in a really bad situation. Yeah, it could be. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. Oh, there's one more question. Do you think AI and AI generated papers might cause a shift away from scientific paper based publishing towards a more wholesome publishing process? Um, well, I think that actually uh, in the future, some legitimate papers will be written by IE. This is there are also already books written by uh, artificial intelligence. And I guess that in 20 years, maybe literature review will be legitimately written by artificial intelligence. This is like a process that 20 years ago, nobody used uh, econometric software to, to make models. And we never cite even the econometric, the software, the papers. Uh, that actually this so software does all the calculations, does all the job. So maybe this is the trend and well, it could be, uh, it could be normal. But I don't think that the, the uh, artificial intelligence is the, uh, is the, is the greatest threat because this, um, the system of research evaluation that many universities and many countries have uh, that is based on uh, centimetric metric based uh, evaluation on number of papers or on number of citations this is the big threat for academic publishers because it it has well all of you know how many bad consequences it has for uh, for also academia this competition and this publish and perish, and this system absolutely should be changed. We have one more question in the chat. Can this fraudulent activity be interpreted as an attack on the credibility of Western academia? Well, it's, um, it's not only just on Western credibility and not only on Western academia, because, well, academia is just academia. I think science is international, but on, on the science itself, for sure. Um, I, I, I definitely, yes. So. Yeah, some some uh, uh, you you will have some contacts from some editors in the chat Thank that would like to 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 share. Uh, Thank you. The knowledge with you and uh, uh, yes, I will send you the link uh, in a few minutes in the chat about this Nature article. Uh, it calls tortured phrases give away fabricated research papers that I was trying to send, but it's only available for my university. Sorry. Uh, and uh, so there is some some things happening in the chat. We are trying to 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 um, yeah put some information in the chat as well. But anyway, uh, I, maybe I also can uh, share the link of uh, yes, Tano Pro Papers if there are editors who can uh, who can look at um, who can look at these weird uh, emails and can be aware of this.
So I did it. Yeah. So uh, I would like to thank you so much. It, it I, I agree with comments in the in the chat that this was fascinating. It really is fascinating. You're doing an amazing job, really. And we are so grateful, actually, that you're pointing this out because I don't think that many researchers are aware of these things happening. So this really is very important work. So thank you so much both for being here and for, for the work. I wish you thank all you. the best and keep up the good work. And thank, thank you, you very much. thank you for being a part of this webinar. Yes, thank you. Bye.